doing in the shower? Nothing. I just washed my shirts when I had my shower. But what am I supposed to do with them? Put them down and jump on them. But don't use soap, because you're the rinse cycle. <laughs> Why don't you use the washing machine? Don't you know anything? If I open the washing machine, the cat would jump out. <laughs> Besides, real men don't use washing machines. They jump on their shirts in the shower. You've got to stop tormenting Madge Burrow's cat. I don't torment it. I love that bloody cat. <laughs> we have lots of fun together. I'm gonna let the poor thing out. No, don't let it out. It took me hours to get it in there. <laughs> I'm not having a shower with a mad cat perving on me through the porthole of a washing machine. I'm letting him out. All right, let it out. Nobody takes a notice of me as usual. But don't let it out till they get to the bank, because it might be a bit stroppy. <laughs> oh, there's a letter here for you. Well, who's it from? A wog. <laughs> How come? It's got wog stamps all over it. <laughs> oh, look, it's from Nana Thelma in Italy. Who? Your wife. <laughs> not my wife, she married some other bloke. Poor bastard. <laughs> so, that's the way it goes. <laughs> we won the war. Listen, dear Tessa, I hate that name, I'm writing to you in English even though you are an Australian because you probably can't speak Italian like I do sometimes, but mainly I just point and nod and accidentally end up owning things at auctions. That's why there's a stuffed horse in a swimming pool, in case you were wondering. Why doesn't she use floaties like everyone else? <laughs> what does she want? She's congratulating me on my exam results and says if I'm ever in Italy to call in and give me the address and phone number. I suppose she didn't invite me. No. I'm going to have a shower. That'd be right. I must be the only bloke in the world who's ignored by his ex-wife. Oh, look, there's a PS. By the way, we have Lotto here, but I can't play it because the balls are in Italian. <laughs> Thelma? Ted? Turn the washing machine on. <laughs> Look at this. The low, gutter scum, blood sucking, dribbling swine. Another letter from your mother. <laughs> You've never liked my mother, have you? She didn't like me. She's always told the world that when it comes to me, you could have done better. Oh well, no use crying over spilt milk. <laughs> <laughs> this letter is from the bank. That's nice. Good news. They are closing. <laughs> Those heartless swine are closing our bank because of restructuring and economic rationalisation of resources and core corporate activities at your branch. We'd better get the money out before they close. Oh, don't be silly, woman. All the money's kept at the head office. And where is our lunch? But that means we'd have to drive all the way to Melbourne just to get the lotto money. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I should have married your sister. What? <laughs> Nothing. You know, what is going on in the kitchen? Hello, darlings. Oh, sorry I'm late. I've had terrible news. Yes, we know. The bank's closing. Oh, exactly, darling. It's young Gino, the well-muscled plumber who's been playing with my air spen for the last few days. <laughs> He's married. I don't know. I don't care, as long as he does the job to my satisfaction. But what's the problem? This morning, he was halfway through showing me his very impressive the plunger, and he threw his back out. Dear, did you try massage? And my new hot breath therapy, but sadly nothing. <laughs> so of course he had to go. I said to him, put your electric eel back in its box and call me when it's working. <laughs> Champagne, anyone? The bank's closing? Yes. Our bank? Next week. Our bank? The one with gorgeous Mr. Waterhouse, who has those bedroom blue eyes and a huge, you know... Term deposit? That too. <laughs> what a disaster. It's the only bank for miles. Jono says we'll have to go to Melbourne to get our money. I did not. <laughs> You're mad, Muriel. She's mad. It's the Prozac. She started taking it with Eno's. It's filling her brain with happy little pink bubbles. God knows there's enough space up there. Yeah. Where is my lunch? I want my lunch. Just remember, 
I am a member of Rotary International. Attention, everybody. A couple of announcements. Sorry lunch is late, but it appears that today's rostered volunteer driver, Mr. Johnston, forgot to pick up the cook at the station. No. Oh. <coughs> today's Wednesday, is it? See? It's all your fault. Don't you dare strike me. I was a commando. <laughs> Anyway, no real harm. Cook assures me the pizzas will thaw very soon. On oh, a bloody frozen pizza! Let's not have a repeat of the tripe omelette incident, especially now that the furniture's being fixed. <laughs> now, item number two. Daylight saving starts on Saturday night. Daylight saving again? Yes, daylight saving again. God bless it. And after last year's debacle, I've decided at company expense to hire a 12-year-old child or Darcy to come and change everybody's electronic clocks. <laughs> and what are you doing about the bank closure? It's outrageous. It's a well, it's all all I'm arranging a meeting with the branch manager. Any questions? Where's Teddy Bullpit? Good point. But who cares? Good news! I worked out how to turn the washing machine on! <laughs> ah, Mr. Bullpit, would you happen to know the whereabouts of Madge Burrow's cat? Uh oh, I'll be back in a flash. <laughs> Morning, Grumble Pop. Get a job. I can't get a job, I'm on holiday. I'm going to the beach. That'll be right. When I was a boy, you didn't see me skipping around the beaches in bikinis. <laughs> we were too poor for beaches. The nearest I could get to a beach was when I got my finger stuck in a horse trough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might not be home. I might get lucky at the beach. No! Oh, oh, don't don't do that. That. Root me dead. Can't a man retire in peace? See you later. See you, Darcy. Hey, Minnie Mouse. <laughs> talking to me? Watch and learn the wisdom of the wilderness. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It's an old Cherokee saying. What does it mean? Watch out for angry Comanches with bows and arrows. <laughs> That's a very silly thing to say. You reckon, Minnie Mouse? How much Cherokee do you know? Oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> It's not easy being a global citizen, Ted. The shadow is on clock patrol. Lead me to him, Ted. Daylight saving waits for no man. Not till tomorrow. Ted Bologna, do you know how many clocks there are these days? They're everywhere. The microwave, the oven. You even get them in dunny rolls. <laughs> Hello, the shadow sees a flashing number. You haven't reset it since that blackout. Oh, yes, I have, honest. You don't know how to do it, do you? I know clocks like fruit bats know swimming pools. <laughs> All right, if you know clocks... Oh, I do, I do. Right, right, well, reset the VCR. Oh, I can't! I can't get it right! <laughs> Not easy being a global citizen, Ted. <laughs> Why does everybody have to ring my bell? Maybe they want to see you. Mm, I don't want to see them. Good morning, Ted. You got any leftovers? No. Oh, oh. Nice talking to you. <laughs> well, what is this about women, Darcy? I mean, why would Muriel come all the way around here from a flat to, to tell me she hasn't got any leftovers for me? You got the instruction book for the VCR, Ted. No, I told you, it's impossible. Ah, I see your problem. It's a Taliban Deluxe. It's made in Bosnia-Herzegovina. <laughs> Where did you get this heap of rubbish? You sold it to me. <laughs> That'd be right. Bull pits the bunny as usual. <laughs> uh, just remember, Ted, whatever time it says, just add nine hours and make it uh, yesterday in Zagreb. Hey? Is there no peace? It's you again. I remembered I had some leftovers. I hope you like tripe. I hate tripe, but I'll have it. <laughs> Doesn't she know it's night time in Zagreb? Oh. God, it's hard. What? Can I have five dollars, please? Well, I never pay for leftovers. It's the lotto money. We could win fifteen million. Fifteen million? Pickle me, grandmother. You can stick your tripe. With that sort of money, I could buy a leg of lamb. Oh, 
by the way, Jono's called a crisis protest meeting in the common room about the bank closure, and everybody has to go. When? Oh, any minute ago. Now. <laughs> We need are some sensible suggestions. But these major banks can't be allowed to go round closing branches just willy-nilly and trampling on the rights of the battlers who made them big in the first place. Yes, absolutely. But the chair recognises Joan Collins. As you know, I have a way of bringing men to their knees. <laughs> or me, depending on the furniture involved. <laughs> so, why don't I just go and have a quiet word with the bank manager? the chairman and the board and fix this whole thing up. Uh, no, no, no. I think sending Joan in as our um, undercover agent must be our last resort. It'd make things a lot quicker. I'm sure it would, but we have a reputation to maintain. So do I. <laughs> now, what about my suggestion of threatening a mass withdrawal of all our funds? Hmm? It's simple and, or may I say, effective. I like it. We'll do it. Well, what about the vote? It's a stupid idea. All those in favour say aye, those against no. Aye. aye. No. The ayes have it. Yeah, but, but... Shut up, Mr. Bullpit. Please, <laughs> I'll ring the bank. Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Waterhouse, please. Ah, Gerald Waterhouse? Samantha MacDonald, Whispering Pines. I am formally advising you that should the bank closure go ahead, all of our residents are voted to withdraw their savings at once. How do you like that? I see. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to hear that. <laughs> Goodbye. So he crumbled when confronted by the simple brilliance of my idea, did he? Sort of. He told us to stick our savings somewhere else. <laughs> Where? Where do you think? Somewhere uncomfortable. Somewhere where the sun doesn't shine. Ah, oh, gotcha. Twiggy Boo on top of the wardrobe. <laughs> so that's it, is it? They think this is the end, but this is just the beginning. This means war. The suits versus the... Versus, versus the cardigans. I suppose we could call John Laws. Better than that. I'm calling Probe. Good evening, everyone. All enjoying happy hour and having a wonderful time? Oh, Darcy, I just noticed the village goldfish don't seem to be getting any better. They should be. The pills are terrific. <laughs> Good news, Samantha. I managed to pull off a bit of a propaganda coup in our campaign against the bank. Oh, really? I persuaded Probe to shoot a confrontation between us and the bank next week. Well done, Mr Johnston. I even gave them the angle to hang the story on. Grey Power versus the banks. Homeowners fight back. Grey Power versus the bank. Homeowners fight back. Very catchy. I've convinced them it'll be compulsive must-watch television. Good. Anyway, must fly. <laughs> Excuse me, Muriel. Just a minute, Samantha. Um, I've had a wonderful idea to solve the bank thingy. Really? Yes, you see, I thought... Get quiet, that... everybody! I want to see if they mention us on Probe for next week. Well, that wraps up another week of Probe, bringing you the stories others are afraid to touch. Next week, Probe exposes yet another scandal. Gay power versus the banks. Gray power! Gray power! We'll see how the old homos... <laughs> See how the old homos are fighting back. Not homos, home owners. Don't they check anything? Join us again next week for more must-see compulsive television. Pro, we bring you the stories others are afraid to touch. I think you'd all agree that without my brilliant foresight and street savvy, none of this would have happened. So I am the spokesman. But I have attitudes, too. Not tonight, you don't. I must say, it's wonderful to meet you after all these years. Yes, I know. I've always thought you're the most exciting man on television. Yes, so have I. Are you married, Derek? No, not at the moment. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <coughs> oh, and this is our spokesman and mover and shaker, Mr Johnston. You're an inspiring man, Mr Irving. I know. Call me Derek. Oh. 
so egalitarian, so modest, so decent. Thank you. Derek, Joan Collins, I too have known the curse of fame. Oh, when? Many years ago. <laughs> oh, that rugged face is even more handsome in the flesh. And believe me, I know flesh. I must thank you for covering our story. My pleasure, my pleasure. So, we have this whole village full of old homosexuals, eh? <laughs> this, this is going to make great television. <laughs> no, we, we're not homosexuals, just ordinary people. Uh, ordinary television? But they told me gay power versus... No, 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 grey power, grey power. Oh, and the homos? No, 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 no homeowners. Oh. Well, I'll do the best I can. Uh, there wouldn't be just one old Qantas steward hanging around? <laughs> no! I'd like to introduce the chief executive officer of the bank, Mr... Black, Ivan Black. Pleased to meet you, Ivan. It's Black. Mr. Black. Ah, uh, where do I sit? Let's get on with this. Good evening. I'm Derek Roving, and this is Probe. On location at Whispering Pines Retirement Village. Tonight, Grey Power versus the banks. With ever-increasing fees, charges and branch closures, has today's bank abandoned its social role in its scramble for profit? First, the victims. John O. Johnston. <clears throat> I speak with two voices. The voice of my heart and the voice of millions of little people. <laughs> little people who are hurting because the bank they have supported all their lives has deserted them. But they desert us at their peril. Be warned that like a great, gray tidal wave, we will rise up and withdraw every last hard-earned cent from your marble halls and watch you crumble into the dust of destiny. <laughs> Now, the bank's right of reply, Mr. Black. Basically, we don't care. What? what? At my bank, your bank, well, more my bank than your bank, <laughs> we've been doing you a favour for years, you bludgers. <laughs> and your pathetic little savings aren't worth diddly poop to us. Oh. 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 You hold up our bank queues while you ferret around in your purses and try to jam your seniors' cards into the ATMs. Oh, You're a millstone around the neck of modern banking and we don't want you. Oh. Oh. The branch will close and that's final. So, as our new mission statement says, lead, follow or get out of the road. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the lady in the middle. We've got to stop. It's lotto time. What? Right now, it's lotto time. We always watch. Cut it, Pete. Uh, we'll pick up my intro later. Look, what the hell is this? I mean, time is money. Shush, I... you. What? The balls are dropping. Number ten. Ten? Same yes. here. Yes, got it. Number thirty-one. There's one. Yes. Sixteen. Yes. yes. Three numbers. Thirty. Yes. Four numbers. Five. Five. Five numbers. Oh, one more, please, God. Seven. Seven. Oh my goodness, we've won fifteen million dollars. <laughs> fifteen million. What are you going to do with yours, Ted? to buy me a brand new top of the range falcon. A falcon? A Ford? You? Yeah, I'm going to get Dick Johnson to autograph it and then run it straight over the edge of a cliff. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to buy myself a huge chemist shop, close the doors and just keep swallowing. <laughs> I'd like to buy a gymnasium. Well, to get fit? No, just to walk. <laughs> oh, smell of that sweat. <laughs> Eureka! The last clock in the village is now on time. These 12 fingers have just adjusted 342 clocks in three days. Come on, Teddy, darling. Pour the champagne. I can't get the cork out. Oh, give it to me. I can pop any man's cork. <laughs> 
Hope! We nearly missed it, Channel 7, Darcy. And you thought my bad guy banker act was real? <laughs> Let me make an ironclad public commitment right now that this bank, my bank, well, your bank, is there to serve. And we will keep that branch open to look after these good people's assets forever. Be they poor or amazingly wealthy, it makes no difference. Probe does it again. Thank you, Mr. Black. Ivan, mate. Oh. Talk about cringe and grovel. It's amazing how 15 million bucks can change a bloke's mind. So, the bank's staying open. Well done, everyone. Now, Muriel has something to say. We haven't won Lotto. What? <laughs> well, what happened was this. I asked myself a question. Muriel, I asked. Would they close the branch if we were rich? No, I heard myself reply. Get on with it, Muriel. <laughs> so, I just had to make us rich, and bingo. Cyril's your uncle. Well, how did you do it? Easy. I just taped last week's lotto drop and then picked those numbers and played that back to that awful man. So, we're not rich? No. Ah, oh, pop. But we do have a bank forever. Oh, well done, Muriel. Yes. Oh, no. A blackout. I'm going to have to reset all the clocks again. 